Hey guys, Board now back with you for the latest ep for a review, I should say, of the latest episode of HBO's Lovecraft Country. This is the third episode of the first season, and it is called Holy Ghost, and it's referring to the ghosts in the house, which Letty buys in this episode, mysteriously buys, I have to say. So. I think this episode really reshuffles the deck, if you like, on the show after last week's conclusion, really, to, I think, what you can sort of see as, like, a two-part sort of opening episode. Because we, we, after, like, the dramatic ending and George's death from episode two, we jump forward about three or four weeks I think and obviously the characters have returned home Montrose is now back home with with um, Atticus and they're all dealing with the trauma of what happened and trying to get their stories straight as well because the issue comes up of do they really tell the truth of what happened to George and what happened there in general or, yeah, do, do they just stick to the set line? And the set line they're going with at the moment is that he was killed by the racist cop. But we soon see that George's widow isn't actually buying this. She suspects that there's something else going on. Now, I don't know if that's just because of the way... Atticus and the and Montrose are behaving or if it's because she kind of knows the sort of stuff that they went out there for or the sort or if she just believes in this stuff and knows a bit about the background of Montrose and also George but anyway she knows something's up and it's kind of suspicious um, and it's Atticus who actually wants to tell the truth. But Montrose is very stern, very kind of just cut off from the idea and, and, and defiantly tells him, no, we, we can't do that. And we get a little bit more of a, a look at, at um, Montrose and his just his kind of issues and, and the lack of a relationship with his son um, and then kind of acting almost as strangers in this episode and we get a little bit of him and George's widow as well and how there's there's definitely some resentment there but most of the episode is from Yeti's point of view, um, Letitia's, which I really like because I like her character a lot. And I think to actually focus on her character for most of this episode, I think, is a good way to really open it up and explore it a bit more. And it's kind of strange how at least part the the characters have gone their separate ways. It's almost like they're still reeling from the events of the previous episodes. And so I think Yeti is obviously grieving and sort of processing it in her own way. So she hasn't really seen a lot of Atticus. And she buys this house and it's she intends to use it as a boarding house in the neighborhood but what it leads to is is this this ghost story because the house has this history and quite early in the episode we start seeing various like hints that the house might be haunted we see you know at times ghosts popping up around the house or just the suggestion that there could be something there lurking and there's there's a nice little tease with like a hand coming at her from under the bed at some point where it like grabs at her and she jumps out 
there's another scene where she hears like stuff in the basement and starts looking around and she's got like the flashlight late at night and she she actually calls Atticus over and again they clearly have haven't seen a lot of each other since returning home so there's this awkward little moment where he puts his up or she so he puts her arm on him sorry her hand on his arm to try and like get close to him sort of thing and he, he pulls away so I think that's like just selling the trauma of what's happened and selling the fact that Atticus isn't in that sort of mood but anyway a, a lot of the episode is set, set in this house and it has a real focus it kind of captures I think what this series is going for where there is the sense of a serialized story and a bigger sort of theme but at the same time I think it's very much playing into like the kind of tropes of having this like anthology style show that's very much I think gonna present you know these very kind of like pulpy um, supernatural type stories almost like short stories and this is what this feels like with the focus being mostly in, in this house and um, the house just looks fantastic and the mood and atmosphere so I think this does sort of if there were a few issues with last week episodes I think this does kind of reclaim the sort of balance of the show I think it invests you once again in the characters it tells an interesting story there's obviously themes in there but at the same time it is a very spooky atmospheric episode with some of the pulpiness towards the end um, but I, I do like the focus of it actually because you have it opens with with like a I guess kind of a typical horror sort of like intro where you have like the backstory of of this house on the screen and it, it you know the letters kind of say or the words say yeah two people entered in such and such year and then they something like they got lost in the house or were never seen again so it's this this typically you know dramatic kind of eerie horror sort of statement and then it it, it goes to day one so it's marking the days from the time that yet yeti brought the house and moved into the house um and I, I really like that as a device and there's just a real energy because she obviously has all these guests in the house and you know there's a party at one point and her sister who we saw in the first episode performs that at the party her and her band and she's obviously really taken back she's like well how have you afforded this because last time i saw you 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 were you know you were like really poor you were struggling to make ends meet and and you couldn't really pay me any rent so i don't know how you can afford that and obviously that is revealed and it's it's a brilliant reveal and a brilliant like double twist but yeah i think this this is again this episode shows a real like high glass um like grasp of atmosphere and tension and pacing and just the various themes and the characters going on um but as someone who really enjoys yeti and i really like that actress i was really pleased to see uh, in a way get her own episode I'd say 90% of the episode 
it's focused on her and it's focused on the house and its history and we see that over the course of history again there has been racism perpetrated in the house that characters who lived in the house um, black characters have been killed or have been subject to like experiments from white people we see in in one of the flashbacks some kids playing with like a ouija board and we don't see much more of that but i think we're probably going to so of course again the racist angle gets played played into they have neighbors who live locally who constantly are abusing letty and her friends they like surround the house they honk their horns they they just shout racist abuse um so all that's happening in the background and i really like actually that sort of um the style of it and the device of them being in the house them kind of having this this sort of freedom within the house and and yet he obviously giving all these people this kind of fresh opportunity but at the same time it's compromised because they're sort of reduced to the margins by this this racist threat and it's coming from outside the house so again i think that's definitely um playing with a classic horror type trope you know this sense that they can't really go outside they can't really have freedom and enjoy total freedom because these like racist monsters are waiting for them outside and just giving abuse and um there's there's all sorts of strange like things that transpire during the episode like when Atticus comes to the party and he sees Yeti flirting with another guy dancing and then Atticus out of nowhere like sort of whips her away and they go into another room and they have sex and it's pretty full on it's it's very kind of animalistic sex rather than you know anything sort of subtle now i wonder why um Atticus was wearing his uniform like his soldier's uniform i couldn't figure that one out since it's in the present day and stuff but i had one or two theories one one is that maybe he just happens to still have it which i guess is possible and maybe he just wears it sometimes when he goes out because he he maybe feels he's less likely to get abuse another theory i had is that this could just be like a fancy dress party and that could have been why he was wearing it the other sort of idea i had about that is then i think if you look at this scene and how aggressive Atticus is when having sex with her i think that's something that might be kind of um like making reference to like aggressive sort of masculinity the fact that he's dressed as a soldier because it, it leads because she has like her period during when they're having sex and again there's something very sort of horror themed about that visual but anyway he apologizes and i guess the surprise of the scene is that she says well, well that was actually my first time which you feel really bad for her that being her first time but i guess it is quite surprising just because of how kind of laid back and cool and confident yeti obviously comes across as quite often and you wonder how much of a strain that could put on their relationship the fact that it was the first time and Atticus just kind of lost control he was very aggressive in how he had sex with her and 
I think that's just meant to like reinforce the state of minds of the characters and that Atticus is still struggling to deal with things. But I, I, I do like some of the drama with Yeti and her sister because it's later revealed that Yeti got the house because she had money left to her by her mother and all the money actually went to Yeti and that's how she got the house and her sister points out well what why did she give you all this money you didn't even go to her funeral you you never had a relationship with her you you were always the one who was in trouble not not kind of the stable one not the one trying to pay you away that's that sort of thing that's the impression we're being given of yeti here and it leads to a fight between them but her sister also makes this claim that yeti is you know she says this is a boarding house but she seems to like just be renting it to her her rich kind of arty f sort of friends so that's another interesting kind of like accusation it again maybe paints this picture in her mind of um Letitia being a, a bit of a phony in a way and maybe goes to the metaphor of this all being appearance all this being a facade a bit like you might say the house is but I do like as I said a lot of the drama which came from the Yeti stuff in this episode but as things develop you really get some brilliant um, directal like visual sort of flourishes and, and you really get a sense of the mood of things and, and how things escalate. So, again, this sense of, of sort of groups and tribes, and it just gets to the stage where the Tisha can't take it anymore and she goes outside and just smashes up all the cars from like the racist, the racist neighbor. She just they're all in a line she smashes them all with a baseball bat and you get like this really effective musical montage it's it's again brilliantly done and the way the scene just fl flows and you get the sense of her rage is is so awesome and of course not surprisingly she gets a race she gets arrested and the cop clearly is racist because yeti mentions you know i i've made countless complaints about the the abuse i've been getting and not surprisingly the cop uses his abuses his power abuses like force onto the t-shirt like they're in the back of this car and he kind of has the driver sort of swerve it so, so that she kind of goes flying and hits her face but he does mention the history of the house and that there's just this history with with black people being killed there or black people being punished and he's kind of like well you're you're not gonna last there basically almost as a threat almost as like a brag and what i like about this is the way she reacts to this like sort of threat because not only she is a little bit intimidated you can see that as you would be and you can see that she's kind of spooked out by the house but it, it's good as a character beat just how determined she is not to get freaked out not to be it's almost like if she moves out the house which is what people like the cop want then she's she's lost the battle she's let like the idiots win basically so out of principle she refuses to leave the house and not, not only this but it leads to her and Atticus like investigating the history of the house and what exactly went on 
Um, so it, she's very proactive as well. And this is when the episode gets really freaky and surreal because they find out that almost like a version of the Q Ku Klux Klan were like conducting experiments in the basement on, on black people, but they they were kind of like these a lot of them were like sporting people, like basketball players, various others. And it's the ghosts that are like like trapped in there and they want the house back basically. They want the tissue to leave and these ghosts start manifesting themselves in the most kind of gruesome sort of way. Um, I think the effects are pretty well done here. You get like this sense like you get this um, it was even an American football or basketball player goes to who appears and got like a sort of a disformed sort of body. It's got like a mixture of like an adult's body and a baby sort of um, face and it really looks very macabre and like mawkish but it looks pretty damn good and what happens is they have the idea to get like i mean not exactly an exorcist but she's doing that sort of thing she's gonna perform a rich ritual to like get that get the ghosts to leave and, and we get this kind of horror type moment where they have to like sacrifice a go as part of the ritual and it starts and this is when things get really kind of over the top and bombastic and they just have this like m kind of melodramatic like pulpy like seance but it looks pretty good like the visual effects are, are pretty on the money and it, it does have an effect and I think because the episode is built to this moment it works a lot better than last week where there was a lot to like but it, there was so much going on on at times and it was almost from the start but yeah this one does feel like they've balanced it out a lot more and they've really built to this big climactic moment and oh my god they really go for it because you have like the ghosts like possessing the seance well the exorcist woman i forget got forget the right term actually but like possesses atticus and the effects again really look good um and at the same time you have like a couple of like like racist guys breaking into the house looking to like just cause chaos and this is when they really go for the pulp because they get beheaded they all get killed by the ghosts who are like manifesting themselves so one of them gets like his head sort of like knocked off by like the top of the elevator and it's an awesome kill the way it comes off and the blood like just sort of splits out the back it's it's fantastic stuff and you've you've got to enjoy it just because hey these guys are villains these guys are monsters and they're getting like they can't come up plus can sorry i can't get the word they're getting their kind of uppers yeah kind of uppers. <laughs> it's been a long day um but yeah, it's a cool scene and Letitia gets them to like channel their anger to turn it around on, on the racist professor who did this originally and we see him appear and basically the ghosts get, get their own back and they turn the tables and it's this big cathartic moment. I think it works so well because it is... I think one of the things this show is doing is is being having these very powerful cathartic moments for the the victims for the African American characters. Now we see the same for these ghosts, and as I said with last week's, I think you get a certain amount of torture, a certain amount of 
like torment and struggle for the main characters but then you have the moments where they turn it around and get their revenge and it's very satisfying and this is no different so it's a great great scene and obviously the Tisha is gonna stay in the house she still has plans to kind of help people locally and make it into a boarding place and now she's trying to like stamp her mark on the house and kind of build it in her own, own mould but there is a twist coming because Atticus notices something in the house and it's one of the pictures which he actually recognises from from the house from last week that they were in so he goes and, and he goes to like this office and Christina is there the daughter of the mad scientist basically and that's the twist the twist is that it was actually Christina doing her father's bidding who actually was involved like through this lawyer basically in in selling the house to Letitia without Letitia knowing under the guise that it was actually her mother's money and it all kind of adds up when when you think about that twist to it so it's a nice little twist it works very well and it all fits quite well together because the whole reason is because Christina intends to use that house to to conduct to carry on her father's experiment the whole Eden experiment so and Atticus is obviously really furious says you you're not going to mess with Letitia and he wants to kill her basically he wants to shoot her but he can't do it I think partly because he's not that way inclined and also because she she sort of positions it as well it would be trouble really I think it's a power thing you, you wouldn't really it wouldn't look good um, a black man shooting a white woman in this neighborhood <clears throat> so she very much has the power and kind of uses that against him but it's it's a really good final scene and really sets things up moving forward but very well handled twist and I love pretty much everything in the house as well so a strong episode um, still not as good as the pilot I don't think but it's I'd say it's easily the second best of the three episodes and it's certainly up there with the pilot I, I don't think it's it's too far off again it's sort of hitting on all cylinders really so that's my review of the third episode of Lovecraft Country let me know your thoughts in the comment below if you've been watching along like and subscribe if you are new to the channel and i will be back with more lovecraft country soon thanks and goodbye